Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we begin our day with a reading from Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. I want to give blessings unto you for this week that is upcoming and let us begin that blessing time with prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you are the God over all things, that you are the great and almighty Heavenly Father. And to God, as we begin this week, as we look forward uh, to your graciousness unto us, to God, we pray that you would give us hearts uh, to hear your word and that you would give us spirits that are attentive uh, to your mercy. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn now to our morning reading, which comes to us from John 14, 21. I will love him and manifest myself to him. The Lord Jesus gives special revelations of, him, of himself to his people. Even if scripture did not declare this, many of the children of God could testify to the truth of it from their own experience. They have had manifestations of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a peculiar manner, such as no mere reading or hearing could afford. In the biographies of eminent saints, you will find many instances recorded in which Jesus has been pleased in a very special manner to speak to their souls and to unfold the wonders of his person. In this way, their souls have been steeped in happiness, and they have thought themselves to be in heaven. All that, although they were not there, they were close to the threshold of it. For when Jesus manifests himself to his people, it is heaven on earth. Although they were not there, they were close to the threshold of it. And we say this again because a man needs to hear that these things are possible. If a man says, I have had such and such spiritual communications, I am a great man, he has never had any communion with Jesus at all. For the Lord regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. He does not need to come near the haughty to know them and will never give them any visits of love. Another effect will be, the, will be happiness, for in God's presence there are pleasures forevermore. Holiness will be sure to follow. A man who has no holiness has never had this manifestation. Some men profess a great deal, but we must not believe anyone unless we see that his actions agree with what he says. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked as Galatians 6-7 tells us. He will not bestow his favors upon the wicked, for he will neither cast away a perfect man, nor will he respect an evildoer. Thus there will be three effects of nearness to Jesus. Humility, happiness, and holiness. May God give them to you, Christian. In this morning's reading from John 14-21, Charles Spurgeon is speaking of the blessings that come with the opportunities we are given to commune with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one of the main ways that we commune with the Lord Jesus is in prayer. And for the Christian, there is no greater opportunity than prayer. We think about what prayer does for us. It allows us to bring the needs of our hearts unto the very creator of the heavens and the earth. You know, this is something that we must be careful never to take for granted. And so let us spend the time that we have seeking the Lord's blessing and especially coming near to him in prayer. For truly, if we spend a life in prayer, we will have these three things that, that Spurgeon speak of. We will be humble, we will be happy, and we will be holy. Let's turn now to the evening reading from Genesis 46, verses 3 through 4. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again. Jacob must have shuddered at the thought of leaving the land of his fathers to live among heathen strangers. It was a new scene 
and likely to be a trying one. Who shall venture among citizens of a foreign power without some anxiety? Yet the way was evidently appointed for him, and therefore he resolved to go. This is frequently the experience of believers. They are called to face perils and temptations. At such times, let them imitate Jacob's example by offering sacrifices of prayer to God and seeking his direction. Let them not take a step until they have waited upon the Lord for his blessing. Then they will have Jacob's companion to be their friend and helper. How blessed to feel assured that the Lord is with us in all our ways and condescends to enter into our humiliations and banishments. Even at such times we may bask in the sunshine of our Father's love. We need not hesitate to go where he promises. His presence is always there. Even the darkest valley grows bright with the radiance of his assurance. Marching onward with faith in their God, believers shall have Jacob's promise. They will be brought up again, whether it be from the troubles of life or the chambers of death. Jacob's offspring came out of Egypt in due time, and so shall all the faithful pass unscathed through the tribulations of life and the terror of death. Let us exercise Jacob's confidence. Do not be afraid, is the Lord's command, and his divine encouragement to those who at his bidding are launching upon new seas. God's presence and preservation forbid so much as one unbelieving fear. Without our God, we would be afraid to move. But when he calls us to, it would be dangerous to linger. Reader, go forward and do not be afraid. Amen. In this uh, evening passage, the uh, writer here, Charles Spurgeon, is referencing the day in which Jacob went down to Egypt. And one of the key things that he has for us today is the reminder that God's providence Though it may be dark at times, though it may uh, be something that we may not want to go through, is all part of God's plan for our life. And when we see the darkness in the days of Jacob, we are reminded of the blessings that came through Jacob's obedience to the Lord. And this is key as we face this day especially. We go in hope and comfort and in peace because we know that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever that his will never changes, and that he not only knows the future, but has already planned the future for his glory and for the benefit of his people. And so as you go uh, through life today and as you go through life this week, keep this in mind. And do not fear whatever it is that this world is bringing down upon you. For know that the Lord our God and the Lord Jesus Christ has not only gone before you, but is going with you in the blessings of his grace. May the Lord be with you today, and may you go in hope and in comfort. God bless.